Welcome to another episode of the Wood Couture podcast. Today we are recording live here in Dubai and we have the absolute pleasure to introduce you to a super power couple, Arturo and Laura Engel. Welcome to the show, guys. Oh, thank you so much for having thank us. You. Yeah, we, we love your podcast. And I think just bringing people from different industries is it's it's really unique. I don't see anyone really doing what you're doing. So I, we really appreciate you having us. Great. And uh, and uh, I'm very excited because uh, I read a, a lot about you and uh, I saw what you do. Your website is fantastic. Your social media is to die for. So I really invite all our viewers and friends and supporters go and have a look at that website of Arturo and Laura the name is a program and their stuff is even better and uh, <laughs> but what I love I tell you before we dive into about you two as individual you I love the the strap line you have defining the future of immersive storytelling that is summarize a lot and uh, we're gonna get there so now the very simple question not rocket science but at what point in time both of you fell in love with photography videography and framing what stands in front of you good question yeah so uh, I started in Spain. I'm originally from there. Uh, and I picked up my first camera when I was a kid. Uh, my dad was an amateur photographer. And I started photographing my uh, friends, skating, you know, different things. And yeah, one thing led to another. Uh, I'm from, from an island called Mallorca. It's uh, an island famous. Uh, tourism is, is, is number one industry there. So I started doing real estate photography for 10 years or so, and they had transition to sh uh, shooting design and architecture. Yeah. And then for me, I guess I also started at a young age, probably around 15, just photographing uh, people in my high school and then some fashion campaigns. One of them was actually in a billboard, so that was awesome. And then... Uh, uh, but I was always doing it on the side and then only in the past two years that I did it full time. Wow. But uh, curiosity, why interiors and architecture and not uh, animal and wild nature? Uh, homes don't move, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was photographing babies and he, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> no, I guess I, as, I guess it's the closest to landscape. I really really like when I started shooting landscapes, it was beautiful to me, but I realized that home, uh, buildings and homes have even more, uh, even, I like it even more. So I don't know, it just, it just uh, uh, a mix of form, shapes, colors, a uh, thing that uh, the, the light path, you know, uh, chasing the light through, through throughout the building is a thing that it's so special. Uh, knowing these tricks and knowing how to portray you know the context of, of a building and yeah i don't know why but it's just something that we really love um right yeah i think there's even nearly like a mathematical component to, to it that i like because a lot of photography for shooting people it's mostly about posing them or you know makeup or how they feel or different things but there's something about interiors and architectural that is nearly you have to have enough space there or just it has to make sense and I kind of like that I have to the, the composition is interesting and also you really feel so much for the design it tells you a lot about the interior design it tells you a lot about the homeowner and yeah I just love it <laughs> listen um it's it's very fascinating. You very coordinated, even the way you know me. You behave so, and uh, I'm curious. Since your husband and wife, you know, I mean, uh, how is it to to be together and working together every single day? <laughs> not easy, not easy. <laughs> but a quick story of um, how we met, because I think that also leads into how we work together. So. I was working here. I used to work for Disney doing data analytics. And then during COVID, I had some free times. So that's when I started doing more photography after work and on the weekends. And I found his work and I was, I loved it so much. So I found it on his 
YouTube channel and I messaged him and that's how we started talking. But I'm giving the story because I think we started, we always started with business and with our personal life. Cause I know a lot of couples, they were together for a long time and then they decided they want to start a business and it's a whole other experience to do something else. And I think maybe couples who started separately would compare, oh, but before, you know, we would have more free time at night or we used to have uh, weekends off or something, but we started our whole relationship both together yeah. personally and the business. So that's all we know, really. And I love it because a lot of things, you know, he's had experience with with sending estimates or how to, you know, uh, correspond with clients. And then also I have my experience of uh, you know, what makes sense for the branding or what makes sense for the marketing. And I think it's been really good. But, but yeah. I think I think the key uh, that uh, has wor is wor works for us is each one of us has a different role. So yeah. she's, she's more into uh, operations and marketing and uh, company structure. And I'm more uh, the artist uh, doing the photo and video work. So I, I we don't step into each other's field. I think that's the yeah key. exactly yeah. So, but w when you both sit down and look in your face, say, "Okay, let's start a business." Do you guys started with a business plan, a budget, and that, or you just say, "You know, let's just get on with that." What, 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 how did you do it? I think I first started saying that your website's really bad. <laughs> It was so old school, the the text and everything, the photos, like, I'm going to make this website a really good website. And then I think I just, we just started doing it together. I started helping him a bit here and there. And then one day, Archer said, let's just merge. Let's just, I don't want to just be, you know, his own name. And he wants to add my name. And then it all just made sense, I think, just from the beginning. We were helping each other out in different ways. And then one day he said, let's merge. I said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Now, now every year we have like a business plan for the year and operation plan. But at the beginning, we just she was helping me to improve the <laughs> the marketing side. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm starting to get a sense who is the creative, who is the business person. You know, but I, I'm not yeah. quite sure yet. But uh, let, let, let's actually you know that's very interesting, and uh, there is a lot of very successful you know married couple out there. You know, I mean, I mean, the the probably not that young, but very famous. I can compare with Antonio Banderas and Melanie Griffiths, you know, meaning, oh, so, yeah. you know <laughs> which is good. One was an actor, the other one, she was an actor, but also very managing the family business, you know, great. It's, uh, wow. Now, um, uh, you said something very interesting before, and uh, that I can imagine when you, you know, they do like that, and they, you frame it, you capturing images, and you said you see the personality or you understand the personality of the owner, but above all, the personality of the interior designers. You know, I mean, uh, and uh, have you found anything in common of uh, shooting the Udam by the same interior designers? What, what is that you see that you say, I can guess the personality of, uh, of somebody? That's such a good question. I think color makes a really big difference. I think, especially in LA, I shoot a really wide range of homes. And I think it's a good question because some of the, when you have a really minimalistic home, you have someone who dresses simple. They, um, how do you explain it? They dress simple and they also um, like want to get things done I feel or some but sometimes I go to a home that's so historical it's so colorful and the homeowner is uh loves uh collecting things that they love you know they've been here they've been there that you can tell that you know sometimes I showed a home and it was like I know you've been to everywhere in the world and she has because she has things from everywhere and I could sense the personality the books she collected they're not just the typical you know books that a lot of people put in the same place they're very you know she went to a vintage store or she sourced them and you could tell by these little things that they pick up and put in their home and I think that's really interesting and you also can tell the homes that you know a developer just put in everywhere and you just move in ready and that's also a type of person that they don't want to fuss about the furniture they just want to move in it has the sofa they want it has you know essential items that they need and they can move in right away so you can see 
the differences in that. But but yeah, for sure you can you can see the DNA of the designer when you see the home. Uh, also by when you see different different projects one after another. So you can without telling even if we uh we wouldn't know we wouldn't know who who's the designer we we would know if we 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 shot different projects for them in the past so yeah that, that's very interesting you say that you know because um um one of one of the common and i would say for i started in hospitality i think my first job in operations it was in 93 out of family business, I had to work for four seasons and uh, in the kitchen, and uh, and since then the common feedback I'm getting from clients, and I would say it is my conclusion too that whenever you go into a hotel, you know, I mean, if they blindfold you and you take you inside without see any visual of the logo of the branding, you don't know in which hotel you are in. Mm, yeah. So unless you know, okay, I'm going to the Four Seasons because you see the signage or you go inside and you see the famous uh, or any naming. So my question to you is, you know, I mean, if, if I'm sure you shot a lot of hotel interiors or, uh, or buildings, you know, I mean, uh, can you tell the difference? Yeah, sure. Uh, usually in general, hotels are more, uh, the question was if we can tell the difference between a hotel in Tirana and a hotel. yeah. So if I if I blindfold you and I take you inside the Four Seasons Hotel or I take you in any hotel without telling you which hotel is, and I t- I say go around and shoot. You know, what I mean, uh, can you tell which hotel brand it is from the interiors? Oh, hotel brand. Oh, it's. I mean, we can we can we can guess, right? Yeah, but, but you're right. It, it would be really hard. Yeah, that's a it's a good question. It would be really hard. It, we we would tell the the style of the hotel, and we, we can guess. But yeah, it would be hard. Yeah. But so let me ask you a different question. Would you be able to tell more or less if it's an interior designer you've been working with before in terms of shooting? Yeah, it would be easier. Yeah. Yeah, but also not. You never know. Yeah. But but but. Uh... What what we what we will we be able to tell? I, I'm sure you you could also be able to tell is that you you could tell like if it's a, a urban hotel, a beachfront uh, hotel, or a family hotel, a couples hotel. I think that's that's the thing that you can see with the with the space, and it's it's obvious on when you see the distribution, the style. Sometimes yeah, but. Yeah, it's, it would be hard to see, uh, to know the the specific brand, right? But you know, it, it, it's interesting because uh, I have a very good friend called uh, Canadian, lives in Dubai, but he's one a motivational speaker, one of the most up and coming, and he's called Dr. Corey Block. He wrote a book called Business is Personal. And I'm start getting a sense that uh, interior design and storytelling is personal. So, because you can recognize after shooting, there is the same interior designer, but it's difficult to guess what hotel brand is. Oh, exactly, yeah. That, 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 that's very interesting. What, what do you think is the challenge nowadays in storytelling for branding, for, the, for, the, for people that work like in hotel brands? What, what is the challenge that they have in storytelling? Or what, what they're not doing right, put in that way? Yeah, that's something I think about a lot because <laughs> I think what the past more than 10 years, you have the same typical hospitality video, you know, the car driving up, you check in the front desk, you walk into your room and get ready, family jumps in the pool. It's always the same narrative. And actually the same thing that you're saying, I could put the same video of someone going and jumping in the pool and you wouldn't know what hotel it's for. So I think there's something, an element to that, that there is, it's actually, there aren't so many unique hotels that are, are trying to find their own story and to tell it. Um, Aman does such a good job of doing that. I see when I, when we see an Aman video, we know, we know it's Aman. So, and there's just something, what I really like about those videos as well is the way they integrate people, integrate nature, 
a lot of their videos, you don't even have, um, there's not even music. You just hear the nature. So they have a signature style. They have a signature, they're telling a story that's just the senses of you being there. And that's something that I think about a lot. And I think hospitality is, to be honest, a bit behind for, for the storytelling and trying to find their their core because the interior designers do you do such a great job with it but then I think there's something lost in translation between the design to the marketing team to the social media team there's there needs to be more cohesive with the storytelling because you have an amazing design but then sometimes the marketing materials could be a bit flat and or they just you know, a lot of people from these hotels, they, they've they been, they've worked at six or seven hotels and there's a way that they've been doing things. But then I think to, to sit down and think about, okay, this hotel that I'm working at now, it's in design, it's an interior designer, but what really is the story to drive yeah. that? And I think that's pretty I, missing. I think in general, they, they do a good work on defining their brand, but when, when they, they want to translate it to images, they fall most of them they fall into the same thing right just oh just i wonder i want you to take photos or videos of the hotel like to see how it is yeah but i think if you go if you do the extra mile if you create a you know a strategy or uh be behind the content you know it's 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 more you know it's not enough of uh, uh, we just we we show in how beautiful the hotel is these days because there are so many beautiful hotels you have to have a brand behind and and a compelling image compelling images um, i think we as photographers and filmmakers we have a big responsibility for the next years because the landscape landscape of uh, creating images has uh, it's changing uh in in a super fast uh, pace uh even as when we look at uh super high-end 3d uh renders of a, of a space sometimes we cannot even tell if it's a photo or, or a render Ima uh, go, if he, uh, imagine like a, a regular user they wouldn't they wouldn't know uh, so i think uh or I, I don't think photography is going to go away because uh, artificial intelligence uh, is going to make renderings better because uh, we we step uh, when the project is finished and uh, the the need of the client to to showcase that the project is finished that it's a reality is not going to go away but I think uh, we need to be aware that some of the uh I, we we've seen like really high hotels sometimes uh in their in their website they still use renders and it's fine you know if the render is so high end uh they don't have to be like uh description uh some renders are so good so i think the one of the things that we're going to do more and more uh from now and in the future is to uh give the or Desi designers and creators like a, a voice um, doing videos when they explain the space when they interact with the different mechanisms of of a space and talking about their process i think is going to be key it's a thing that uh human interaction in a video is a thing that is harder to do uh, in renders and it's more real than just the, oh this space is so nice and i think that's one of the things that is going to change in the coming year. Do you think, but l let me ask you a question, but do you think that explaining what space, what the universe look like, or what the moon look like from an astronaut is the same as shooting the astronaut in space and explaining what the moon it, look it's, like? It's, it's different, right? But but I think it adds value when when someone explain their creation or their experience about something, right? I think it's another whole dimension. We, we do the same for when we do, uh, when we, after every job, we produce a behind the scenes where we talk about what we've done. And, uh, it, and it's important is, is, is for for brands it's important to, 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 to say what's behind the scenes these days. And I think uh, our clients love talking to the camera uh, most of the time, and I think it's a thing that is going to let us like be current to the times. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm not entirely sure that I agree with you on one thing, that I think that a, a rendering, yeah, can tell a lot. And I think technology, design technology, go very far. But I, I don't think it will be as close as like a real shooting of the real place. Because what a rendering don't give you is the imperfection. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really good point. And, and and it's like say you know I mean uh, this kid is going to be very successful, but it doesn't it doesn't show you the character of this guy that that is is a is the personality of the place, so and and they, we still the industry still need people like you to realize to to actually give a feeling of what the place yeah. look like and, and a subjective view sometimes yeah yeah because you you may look like. It may look great on the rendering, but the moment you go inside, you know what I mean? How, how best compare it is that I've seen in the past uh, a lot of nice hotels and, uh, and then uh, they look brilliant and everybody loves it. And both male and female do that. But then a female walks in and say, it feels very masculine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it looks like it yeah. feels very masculine. So it's yeah. very threatening for a woman. And as opposed, you have men that goes inside that, it says it, it feels very feminine environment, you know, I mean, it's a, you know, which is not got to do with the color. The colors you see it in a, you know, in a rendering too. It's just, a, a, it's interesting how, you know, and I, I, I think your, 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 you know, particularly in hotel when they do mock-ups, yeah. they do mock-up and, uh, and they only do the mock-up of the bedroom because it's the largest number of samples, let's call it, you know, they have to do. But actually what people see is the public spaces first. It's, uh, and they go in and they never capture the look and feel when you walk into a place and, whoa, it's mm -hmm. nice. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, I, think, uh, I think they need people like you. They, they give them the imperfections yeah. and the personality of the place. Again, brilliant. Okay. Got it? This is a good micro. This only. Mm. Since you guys put together Arturo and Lauren, um, what is the most exciting job you undertaken? I know they are probably all exciting, but what, which is the one that you said, wow, that was uh, breathtaking? Yeah, we, uh, I think one of the most, uh, last year we filmed and photographed a hotel in Dubai. Uh, um, for Melia Hotels is one of the top uh, hospitality brands in, in Europe, and we shot the the hotel they have in in da close to Burj Khalifa, and the Opus by yeah. Zaha. Yeah, Hadid, yeah. yeah. Opus Zaha. by Zaha did yes, yeah. very iconic building. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was nice. Yeah, the the <laughs> the place was amazing, and we created a story with. Uh, Two people, and we we did a minimalistic uh, approach with the video, and it was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but also, like um, sometimes is that that also we we enjoy that video because we had the chance to uh, the client uh, let us do uh, our own thing, and they like our, uh, the idea that we have. We integrated so well with the city and stuff. But um, sometimes it's just the random project that you 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 get to enjoy the most. It just it's also the connection with the client. It's so important. I feel when you when you shoot, uh, let's say one of these Beverly Hills big mansions. You know, I mean, where do you start? <laughs> I mean, there is a story. Or sorry, not a story. There is a sequence of how you go to to shoot something or. You know, you just go randomly and go with your gut feeling. Um, first of all, I, I want to say that uh, the term, like, our, uh, what we do, we, we do so many things, right? We can, uh, it depends on the project, on the client. We, we, we work in different ways. We, we do, like, residential photography for architects and designers. 
We also do uh, shoots for interior designers. We shoot hotels. Uh, we shoot shopping malls. Uh, different things, right? But for every every client is different. Uh, same with video. Like we can do a furniture uh, commercial video and other things, right? So uh, when we shoot, a, for example, a residential project for the developer or an architect, what we uh, you always do is like a pre-production process. We go to the, uh, we meet the client. We go to the house. We uh, the client discuss about uh, how uh, they envision the project. What are the key points? And then uh, we do a series uh, of sample image, and we do a back and forth with the client. And then when we go to the shoot, we know what we're gonna do. But it's also it's always good to leave room for the imagination and uh, things that are not planned because. Uh, as I said before, uh, capturing a new unique light in the right moment and the right uh, place, it's its something that we strive for. Uh, we we want to, it's not the same uh, photograph in a room with, with uh, it, the, the best is to photograph room with the best light. And um, yeah, so uh, we, we start like super early in the morning, like in here in LA, like five, six a.m. And we finish at uh, when it's so dark, and we we do different areas, and sometimes with people, without people, sometimes uh, uh, human present uh, help to tell a story. And and did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got the approval of the boss. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the boss. Is, <laughs> everything is fine. That's great. You know, I I, I love uh, when I see that. You know. Such a passion, you know. I mean, in uh, business and personal, you know, is incredible. You know, I'm the same with my wife. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, thumbs up. Bravo on that. <laughs> yeah, she has to approve. So, <laughs> what do you see? What do you see your business growing to in the next five years? What do you see things will be go for Arturo and Lauren? Well, we're working on a bunch of things. I think for for first video is we still have so much that we want to go for video and for the community as well we we have a few communities that we operate with you know 8000 subscribers different things and i think there's so much more to push for videography for hotels architects and cheer designers that the surface hasn't even really been scraped or anything um <clears throat> there i think for photos i mean so many good uh, photographers but there, are, there aren't too many videographers that do very nice editorial videos for hotels. So that's something that we're so passionate about to bring it to the mainstream and to, um, to bring it to designers. Um, we we, we want to be more and more creative every time, like uh, adopting like ideas that that we can we can come with with uh, with clients and really knowing what the the audience want to see. So. Um, as Lauren has said before, we want to do new things, and also we're tapping into education. Uh, we're we're creating courses for learning how to do architecture and interior filmmaking, and that's the thing that we're gonna do this year. Yeah, he's been asked for for years to um to to <laughs> to teach or to do some video courses. So finally, we have time this year to set aside and film that or about gear he knows so much about gear and I mean I would even say he's in some departments like pioneering you know a lot of the gear it was still you know when he first started around 10 years ago a lot of the gear was so no, big right what, what, what she means is yeah um since there, there was like a revolution like 15, uh, 15 years ago almost that then before that for doing a v uh for producing a high-end video, you had to shoot with really big like film cameras, like, um, and it was so expensive and so unattainable. So since then, you know, uh, everything has got gotten more uh, accessible, easier, and for us creators, so it's it's easier to to create and do new things. And I I I I was I was first to adopt these things, and uh, among many other people but uh we they, uh, i try to put these 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 new technologies to apply them into the architecture filmmaking world and it's not a thing that everybody does because photographers usually they lack a bit in the when moving the camera 
it's a different thing to be photographers and we we always uh try to do have both things on the same on the same level either the photo and video and yeah that's what she means yeah and he was even building drones from scratch or something yeah. really really early on he was experimenting so much he knows so much about gear i can bring him to the camera store and point out a lens and he would know exactly all the pros and cons and everything so we think we want to double down into an academy teaching uh video about equipment and then also on my end i think a lot of photographers focus a lot on equipment and gear but less on the business side and that's my background so i would like to we're we're selling a lot of things like website templates that i have coming up and but just general like general photography for what we do it's not just the creative you have to market yourself you have to figure out the website the brand what you're saying with the story and that's something that a lot of photographers um, think about and that's something I would like to share as well. Let me ask you a question Arturo what is the uh, you capture through the cam uh, through the lens that you don't capture with the naked eye? Um, so uh, when you I think when you it's not the you, you capture with the eye is that you retain the information in your brain right? So I, when you when you visit a space, you have like an idea in your mind, right? And when you see a photo, it's like just a still moment. It's like something I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's so different. When you see when you when you have been in a space and you ha you try to remember that space, you have another like sense. The photo is like just a, like just a I don't know how to explain it, but video translate the space maybe more uh in a way that that you have in your brain but photo is like just i don't know how to explain it's hard to say how would you say <laughs> is it is it interesting uh, <clears throat> I, I tell you what i'm sensing you know listening and uh what, what caught my attention is what lauren was saying earlier and uh and and and, and also the way you were explaining certain things when you said that I've asked you about how can you determine for what you're capturing the personality of an interior designer or the, the personality of a homeowner is, and you said, I can see the, the type of books they have, the type of artifacts they have, whether they've been traveling or not. And what is very interesting is that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm forming an opinion that uh, through the lenses, you're able to see the minor details and uh, to analyze the minor details because, and, and perhaps that's what in the hospitality industry, particularly interior designers, they do a lot of great spaces, but what is missing is the, the minor details that everybody comes to the conclusion and says, oh, but the guests don't see that. The guests don't, don't care about that. But actually, you, you just define what a guest see. Because a guest has time when he goes to a hotel. You know, he goes there, and then, and then when you go to a hotel, you start seeing a few books here, a few books there. But their books, they are, hmm, you know, they're not just a gossip book or they're a rubbish book. I mean, or the book should, yeah, exactly. should be, you know, in line with the, the brand. You know, if you go to an SLS, it's a party place. So I don't expect to find Gandhi, you know, as a book. <laughs> you know, I would rather see, you know, me, RuPaul, you know, me in a book, you know, Priscilla, the Queen of the Desert, but uh, autobiography as opposed to, you know, Bill Gates. Instead, going to a more uh, upmarket for season Mandarin and see a more uh, refined, sophisticated books because, uh, you know, my guess is that the person that goes to these places, you know, I mean, has a, has a different positioning, I would say. But it, it, it's interesting because... I'm, I'm almost, uh, 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 wow, very, very interesting, very, very interesting. Uh, in, in, in photography, you re represent um, a moment in time, but you represent uh, a field the, to be sheltered. When, when, you, when you photograph interior, you don't want to be, uh, when you shoot a facade or, or a building, you want to show, you want to showcase it like something mo monumental, right? But when it show, when you showcase an interior space, especially a home or a hotel room, you want to feel like you feel cozy. You feel like you want to be there. 
So as you said, uh, one important thing is to uh, portray like uh, the design preference or, or the the style that they want to show, but also you need to feel cozy. You need to feel like, wow, it's so nice. So, yeah. Is it, is it more complicated shooting black and white or in colors? Yeah, it's, it's... <laughs> have you tried recently in black and white? Uh, I yeah, I when I started, I I I learned in black and white and everything. It's it's a different beast, but it's it's the same. Uh, yeah, I, I would say is it's easier to photograph in color in black and white. Uh, sometimes the tones, the tonalities, and everything they blend uh, too much and. It's easier in color. But yeah. sometimes black and white look come. very sexy. You know, a, a picture yeah. in black and white yeah. Is, oh, yeah. is is more powerful than uh, with a lot of colors. You know, I find that even yeah. some of our marketing material, I love black and white because it's like, wow. I don't see it that often. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, uh, we, we, we remember uh, um, one of the, the first uh, architect photographer, Julie Schulman, Schulman is, is from LA as well. And, he had really good photos in black and white. He's a, an icon in architectural photography. I would actually like the, to flip the question back on you because you made, you had a really good question. Could you tell the difference between uh, the photographer's work or videographer's work? Like how you were saying that if you walked into a hotel, all the styles are the same, but could you be on a website and you think, could you... Could you tell the range of the 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 photography or the video or what what's your sense from from for your your you know you have the eye as well? I thought it's a, it's our podcast. I didn't know it was <laughs> Arturo and Lauren, you know, in an immersive podcast. But I give you an answer. Um, I I I give you an example, and uh, and um, and and I think is very much in line with. The extraordinary things you do, guys, because uh, um, and and I think it is very personal. You know, I mean, uh, videography and photography is very personal. You know, you take a picture the way you feel. You know, I mean, it's, uh, and even if you tense, and even though you you don't have to hold the camera, sometimes you, you stand on the tripods, but. You know, I mean, it's like the, the leash of a dog. If you are tense, the dog feel it on the other hand without pulling. You know, I mean, it's the energy that comes out of the body. But I'll give you a very specific example that is uh, we had recently and uh, um, for our corporate video, for our group. And, uh, and I related to the hotel industry. And you're absolutely right, uh, Arturo. When people do hotel videos, they always do it. Spaces, no people, no storytelling. It's like, here we go. Look at this. You know me, like if, oh my God, it's so beautiful, I'm coming. Give me nothing. Don't give me a sense of belonging. But I really invite you to look at the video of the SLS launch in Dubai. It's in YouTube. It's widely available. For me, whoever did that video, give me exactly what an SLS stands for. So mm. if I have to define wow. them, what a party hotel, what a lifestyle hotel for that kind of audiences, when you go there, that is exactly a video that blow my mind off. It tells me exactly what a lifestyle hotel is of that brand. And uh, so, and I invite you to go and have a look at that. I ain't gonna, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, did, we did the public area of the hotel, the furniture of the hotel. So, and uh, I would say, uh, it's not because it's our job. It's actually, for some reasons, it changed our mind, even the way we have to shoot the, the project we do, you know what I mean? As opposed to the boring, here's the picture of a chair, you know, having a beautiful lady sitting on it. Is he gave a soul to furniture for my business, but he gave a soul to that place. So if I really want to entertain somebody, young audiences, flamboyant, you know, people transgressive, but people they want to be on top. You know, they're always on, on top of the new trends. That is the place where I would take them because that video says a million things. And 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 whoever whoever captured that video, I would say 
he has an imagination which is, uh, you know, I mean, I envy. I don't have it. But that's more important, yeah. The consumer uh, point of view. Yeah. But it captures a lot, you know. It's, uh, but anyhow, let, 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 let's go back in that. Now, I want to ask you a question because it's, it's interesting. I love the fact that you guys thinking of setting up academies and uh, teaching your courses to teach. And uh, very simple question. Would you get people that come to the courses to be able to, you know, do the, the picture the old way, you know, I mean, uh, with the water in the dark room? That, or, would, be that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to understand. Yeah, no. Would you learn more by doing it that way? I know it's probably very 30 years ago, but uh, I'm wondering whether it's like anything, you know, like people using a calculator or pen and paper and doing the maths. Is it? Uh, yeah, no. I think for learning basic photography skills, I think it's important to uh, start with analog, uh, traditional film photography. Uh, it's the way that I learn, and it, it's uh, it's an enjoyable process and a crafty process. But uh, no, when we, we the courses that we're gonna do is uh, they're gonna be a film like a fifteen hour video uh, with different chapters. And people are gonna just buy it online. We go, it's gonna it's gonna be pre-recorded. It's gonna be about the process of filming. The first video course is gonna be about the process about filming residential uh, jobs, residential videos, um, and it's gonna be all. They're also gonna be post post production, a part of post production. And also another add-on as well that is going to be more exper experimental with crazier stuff, like uh, higher end stuff. Yeah. Wow. It's uh. No, we're coming towards the end of our chat, and uh, uh, but you know you're a photographer, so you capture. But let me let me tell you this: if I put a white canvas on top of the Los Angeles Hills with the Hollywood sign is, what message would you write in there? <laughs> wow! <laughs> Everybody uh, will see it, like they see the Hollywood sign, same size, massive. I feel like a part of me wants to say, "Leave LA, how it still has so much soul." Because I think I I follow these pages on Instagram that's um post old LA pictures, and you can see so there's been so many amazing homes that I you know, golden age actors, actresses that just get demolished and just, you know, rebuild these same developer homes. But LA, even though people don't think about it, it really has a soul. And I, I think that's something that's just like, just leave LA how it is, you know, there's so much soul here already. It's so historical. There's so many different types of homes. And I hope I can still see a lot of these um, homes still exist for for a long time. So and buildings, yeah, and buildings, yeah. yeah. There are even downtown. If you look at old photos of downtown, it's it's so historical. But you wouldn't even think about it. If I asked a normal person, oh, LA downtown, a lot of people in the US wouldn't even know what it looks like, you know, because it's LA is transitioning constantly. Beverly Hills now doesn't look anything like it was 50, 60 years ago, and I think it was <laughs> a lot beautiful then. Some now, but mostly then. <laughs>